Live from our hurricane headquarters with real-time analysis from some of the nation's top meteorologists, this is Tracking the Tropics, powered by Bose Electric. Welcome to Tracking the Tropics. I'm meteorologist Rebecca Berry, and we have a lot to talk about. I know it's been active in the tropics lately, and today is no exception. And for the first time this season, we're actually tracking a system that may end up impacting the Florida Peninsula. And so that's been new. Joining us right now is Chief Meteorologist Jeff Baradelli. Yeah, thank you, Rebecca, for, uh, for doing this. She's spearheading it. She is not just producing it. She is directing it, and she's lending her meteorological expertise. So she's wearing, we got to get you hats. We do need hats. So you can put different hats on, (laughs) you know, when you change roles. Well, now everyone knows if I mess up. (laughs) Why? (laughs) That's exactly why I told them that it was you that was in charge of this operation, not me. And you actually caught this, I think, first, this system that we're watching. You and I were talking about this yesterday when the model run started coming out in the afternoon Mm -hmm. hours, and it started looking a little dicey out there. Yeah, you know, um... At this point, folks, just to kind of cut to the chase, it looks like we'll probably have some type of tropical depression or tropical storm in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. But I don't think this is going to be a very strong system. I think at the very worst, it'll probably end up being a low-end, low-end hurricane. And it likely couldn't become a low-end hurricane until it got past our latitude, right? So the further north it goes, the more time it has to kind of get a little stronger. That's generally what we're looking at. Now, there could be surprises, Rebecca, as we've been talking about all summer. Yeah. Gulf temperatures are so far above records that we've never seen anything like it before. So things can happen a little faster because of that. And that is what we're worried about with a system getting into the Gulf and possibly developing close to shore without time for people to prepare for it. And Tracking the Tropics is an interactive platform. So if you'd like to ask a question about this system, you can use you can comment in our Facebook page, the WFLA Facebook page comment section. Use one of our hashtags. You can see them on the screen underneath our faces. It's hashtag Hey Jeff or hashtag Hey Rebecca. You have to use the hashtag so that we're able to access your comment and pull it into our system. And that way we can order it. But right now, Jeff is going to head to the wall and give us a breakdown on what we can expect with this potential tropical system. All right, the boss says I have to go to the wall. That means I that means I have to go I to the wall. I kind of like driving right, now. <laughs> that's right, isn't it great? All right, so let's see, let's see. Here I am. Okay, not quite up in front of the maps though, Rebecca. Working on it. There we go. Look at me. I just <laughs> appeared out of nowhere. It's like magic. All right, so I want to show you what's happening. So as you can see, this is an orange area. An orange area means a medium chance for development. And that's been going up. Last night it was 20%. This morning, it was around 40%. Now, it is 60%. So clearly, the National Hurricane Center thinks this has a pretty good chance of developing, and it wants to get our attention. The National Hurricane Center will often do this because they want everybody to start paying attention. Right now, it's kind of an odd situation because you can see where the system's located. It's actually in the Pacific Ocean. It's not in the Atlantic Ocean. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. There's a lot of thunderstorms, so there is actually a disturbance. Now, it is probably going to lose a little bit of its organization. It's not very organized. But lose some of its organizations, it moves over Honduras right here. But then it emerges right here in the Western Caribbean, where water temperatures are super, super hot. There is a lot of heat content there. And so there's the chance that it could very well develop. Now, we're going to go through kind of the parameters uh, and the things working forward and working against it. But first, I want to show you the evolution. So you can see that by Sunday, something is happening here to the east of Cancun and Cozumel. A lot of tropical moisture is gathering, and the purple is indicating that that moisture is coalescing or coming together near an area of low pressure, which is beginning to form. As we head towards Monday and Tuesday, it moves north. Right now, if we were to get hit by some type of tropical system, be it a tropical depression, a tropical storm, or a very strong tropical disturbance, we would probably get hit Tuesday into Wednesday. But you can clearly see all the purple right there indicating that that's where the European model, this is the European model, thinks the storm may go. I will tell you that one of our good computer models pushes it towards Fort Myers, and another one's a little further west into Apalachicola Bay. But generally, the range is somewhere from here, Apalachicola Bay, so to the east of Panama City, all the way down to around Naples. That's generally where the models have been. Now, I know what you're probably thinking if you're anywhere near the Tampa Bay area. We really need the rain. So this is a good, this could be a blessing if it's not a strong storm. Again, we don't expect it to be a strong storm. 
So let's talk about the synoptics, as we call them. What's going on in the atmosphere uh, to kind of allow this storm to form? Well, first of all, as we head towards Friday and Saturday, an upper level ridge is going to develop right here in the western part of the Caribbean. So that's essentially like an incubator. It's a nurturing environment to allow the system kind of to breathe and get a little bit stronger and get organized. So at that point, we'll be watching to see if something organizes in the western Caribbean. Same time as a lot of wind shear in the Gulf of Mexico. But what happens here, and this is really, really critical, is some of our computer models that are forecasting this evolution, they develop an upper level low here. So essentially, instead of the, instead of the wind shear just carving a path right through the state and just cutting the head off of this potential storm, the upper level load kind of spins around and then it actually allows for a corridor to open. You can see this south to north flow right there, allowing the system to not only form, but also move towards the west coast of Florida. So let's show you something else. And we were talking about this, Rebecca and I. As we zoom into the Gulf of Mexico, take a look at where water temperatures are. Everywhere is in the orange, indicating record hot Gulf temperatures, 1.2 degrees Fahrenheit above record and around 2.6 degrees Fahrenheit above average for this time of year. So there is high octane fuel. Let me show you this. So if the European is right, and it's not the only model, the uh, GFS, the American model is much weaker, but it still brings the tropical moisture in. If the European's right, it goes west of Tampa Bay, and that's where the heaviest swath of rain is. Now, it could be further east, it could be further west. Don't pay too close attention to exactly where the heavy rain is. But if you get under the middle of this system, you're talking anywhere between four, six, maybe up to eight inches of rain. Right now, at least, I'd say a couple of our models, the Canadian model and the European model, pulling it a little further west. So we're on the edge of the heavier rain. And that puts us in the two to four inch category with some areas along the coast getting a little bit more than that. Again, as the storm shifts and the strength of it changes, the whole area of rain would change and move either this way or further that way. So we don't know exactly how much rain we're going to get, but clearly it looks like uh, possibly some heavy rain is heading our way and rain chances are going to be going up. All right, I'm going to go sit down now and we're going to take some questions from you, Rebecca. Yes, that's right. And so we are getting some of your questions in and that's the good, the good part of this. So if you do want to ask a question in our Facebook comment section, use the hashtag Hey Jeff or Hey Rebecca, and you can use a hashtag. Once you use that hashtag, that allows us to see your question and bring it into our system. So the hashtags, once again, hashtag Hey Jeff, hashtag Hey Rebecca, ask a question, and we are here to answer those questions. This is impressive. I know. You're doing a good job. One, thank you. Thank yeah. you. And so the first one is hashtag Hey Jeff, how will this impact Labor Day weekend for the Gulf Coast, if at all? People cut right to the chase, don't they? They do. Yeah. Well, here's the good news. This will be in and out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, lingering effects on Thursday, and then gone. So that means Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday will be great. You know, that's the good thing. When you have a tropical system that moves in, once it leaves, it takes a lot of its moisture with it, and we end up with nice conditions around here. So I think the timing is perfect here for hopefully a good soaking of rainfall, which we really need. And Rebecca, I was showing, actually, I, you know what? I'm going to press the I'm going to press forward because I want to show you the drought here. Oh. Uh, this is insane yeah. for the middle of summer, right? Uh, Sarasota, you're, you're owed 17 inches of rain from Mother Nature, and I would hold her to it. Uh, 13 <laughs> inches below normal. Not all at once. <laughs> so that's, that's the problem, right? But we really need the rainfall, so getting the rain without the strong tropical winds would be ideal, right? Yes, absolutely. I think this could be a great drought buster for us, and especially since right now all the forecast models are showing that it could be on the weaker side. We wouldn't really have to worry about storm surge, and since it's on the move, we wouldn't really have to worry about uh, rain-based flooding. I was mm. thinking the other day about how nice the weather is the day after a tropical storm. Yes. It's just, for it some is. reason, a lot of times you don't have power, and sometimes it's a little cooler, and so sometimes the weather right after a tropical storm is actually ideal, so that's good for Labor Day. And so our next comment is hashtag hey Rebecca Marco Island vacation Sunday through Friday what are we heading into oof well it's still a little too soon to tell what the impacts might be for Marco Island but it does it does unfortunately lend itself to believe that we can expect enhanced rain chances uh, Marco Island's a little south of here so possibly starting as early as Monday enhanced rain chances Monday Tuesday and then you would probably start to get better possibly on Wednesday into Thursday and so I know Marco Island, if you're staying there, it's because you love being outside and being on the water. It's just such a beautiful place. 
I do think you want to get down there as early as you can on Sunday so you can enjoy some fun times before the, the, the bands of rain start to set in. And Monday will probably be decent, especially for the first half of it. And then you'll start to see increasing frequency of the rain bands. Now, this could all completely change over the next couple of days because one thing about this system is that we do not, it it's not, hasn't formed yet. We don't have a center. And so when this system gets over the Yucatan Peninsula and into the Atlantic, that's when we'll have an idea, a better idea of where the system will end up. It still could head further west than us, and Marco Island could be absolutely fine. And so our next question is, hey, Jeff, what kind of wind do you think that there will be? Interesting. Okay, I'm bringing up the computer over here because, Rebecca, I was having, tr- I was having technical difficulties advancing the okay. computer, but I think it'll be easier from here, hopefully. Okay. Uh, What kind of wind do I think? Well, you know, like I said before, I don't think that this is going to be a very strong storm. I think at the very worst, this would be a low-end hurricane, so a Cat 1. I think it'll struggle to get there. I think it may reach it at the very last minute, perhaps, if it happens. Um, Rebecca and I were talking. We think maybe 5 to 10% chance that that happens, right? So it's a much greater chance that it stays in the tropical storm or tropical depression category. Uh, So if it takes that track right there, and you can clearly see that's, that's rainfall, but Obviously, that's where the strongest winds would be, too. Uh, for, the, uh, for the question at home, um, you know, I was just looking. The European model has uh, winds over the water of up to 75-mile-an-hour gusts, mm-hmm. and it has winds on our coast with that particular track right there of up to 60-mile-an-hour, 65-mile-an-hour gusts. So scattered power outages, but nothing that would be dangerous necessarily. Yeah, I think things may be impacted that were already weakened. You know, weakened tree limbs might get blown down. Things that were already compromised could be damaged with those type of winds, but I wouldn't expect anything widespread. I think we've seen thunderstorm wind gusts. You know, yeah, yeah. We'd be, we'd be okay. It would actually be good practice for us. Every year we need a little practice to make sure we remember how to prepare for a hurricane. And if it's a weak storm, yeah. then it kind of, okay, we get the water, we do what we have to do, you know. And this could cool things down in the Gulf a little bit. You yeah. Know, think of what it could do for the sea surface temperatures in the Keys if it helped there yes. and, and the sea surface temperatures over the Gulf. I did not think about that, but that is that is a really great point because mm-hmm. remember, almost all the coral is dying in the Keys right now and they desperately need water temperatures to go down a few degrees, take a little bit of um, the stress off the coral so they may have a chance to recover because yeah. they are on the edge, the edge of death. Most of them, a lot of them have died already. So that's, that's a really good point. I didn't think about that. And then I think we're getting this question because of some wild social media posts that I've seen, but hashtag, hey, Jeff, should we be preparing now for whatever comes? (laughs) (laughs) Well, so I'm sitting back here right now because I need to I need to get our graphic on something. Hold on a second. Maybe it should be this one. What is going on? I'm just trying to get our graphics up. Hold on a second, Rebecca. What was the question again? I can I can do two things at once. Yeah. Should we be preparing now for whatever comes? Um. Yeah, I think you should simply be just doing what you would do at the beginning of June, right? Mm -hmm. And just get your hurricane safety kit. Just make sure you have everything you need. Make you know that's it. I mean, we should do that every year at the beginning of hurricane season. But I would say probably ten percent of people do that. The rest of the ninety percent don't actually get to it. The rest of us wait till later. (laughs) Right. So this is so these trial runs are times for us to say, okay, let me get the dust off of my hurricane kit. Let me just make sure I have this stuff. Let me make sure I have a. Let me go over the plan in my head with, or go over it with my family, make sure everybody knows what to do, just in case at the end of September or October something real comes our way. You know what I mean? Not that, I don't want to. I don't want to minimize this mm-hmm. because it, again, if it were to become a, a, a low end hurricane, that would be dangerous. Yeah. But it's better than Ian, by far. And by the way, let me just say this is the eye storm, the infamous eye storm. Ida, mm-hmm. Ivan, Ian. Uh, Ian, Irma, Irma. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't like high storms. No. Even when we went into the Greek, Greek alphabet, iota was a bad one. Yes, iota. That's <laughs> right. Yes. I didn't even think about that. And then your next question is coming in from Abadil on our WFLA Facebook page asking, hashtag, hey, Rebecca, what about the time frame? And so the time frame for this right now, and once again, all bets are off until this makes it over the Yucatan Peninsula. That could drastically change things based on where the center actually might end up being. But right now, I think we'll start to see the outermost rain bands reaching southwest Florida on late Monday and then really enhancing our chances of rain. I think Tuesday and Wednesday could end up being almost washouts, very rainy, a little windy, very gloomy looking, that sort of that thing. That would be great. That would be great considering that every day we've seen 95, 96, 97 degrees. It's been, it was the hottest July on record. It's, it may go down to the hottest August on record. Yeah. 
and we really need the rainfall. And this would solve all those problems. We just don't want it to come with the wind. No, we just want it to stay yeah. weak. And I think wind shear is our friend. I think we'll be able to um, possibly see just a weak system move through and may just bring us that much needed rain. We have another question. This is coming in from Josh on our WFLA Facebook page. Hashtag, hey, Jeff, how much different is the synoptic setup for Michael? Because that formed in a similar spot. Yeah, I, you know, you're asking me to remember. I can't even remember what I have for breakfast this morning. <laughs> but clearly there were differing synoptic setups because Michael became a cat five storm. And I do realize that it's headed north into the Gulf of Mexico, but I would not. I'll just say, I don't remember the synoptic setup for Michael. It was 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. The fact that I remember that is a miracle. But um, yeah, I, it was a very different synoptic setup for Michael, I'm sure. And what Rebecca said is exactly right. The wind shear is going to be stronger across the Gulf of Mexico straight through Sunday and probably into Monday until this upper level low breaks off. And if that happens exactly the way the European says, that is the best potential this storm has, which means it only has about a day, day and a half to strengthen. And remember, a storm cannot strengthen until it's organized. So that is, you know, when I, when I bring this up about reaching its potential, that is uh, all the foundation of that is the storm is actually organized when all the shear starts to abate and the upper level low starts to allow it to know. Bottom line is, I wouldn't necessarily start comparing this to Michael. What I will say, and, and Rebecca, you mentioned this, social media posts. Folks, be careful. Uh, there are some irresponsible social media posts out there. Um, you know, if someone says they know what's going to happen with this system and you, they're worried that it's going to be a big hurricane or something, don't listen to them. There was someone a couple of weeks ago that said there was going to be a cat on TikTok, said yeah. there was going to be a Category 6. Do you know how many meteorologists are in the supermarket getting asked if, if we're going to get by a Category 6 hurricane in September? I mean, that's just... That in itself is irresponsible, but anything beyond that, anything beyond what we're telling you here mm -hmm. is generally irresponsible. We're telling you everything we know. There's nobody out there that has a magic ball that knows yeah. more than what we know. And this is the best case. This is the best guess or estimate that we have based upon the data we have. And honestly, social media has changed the way that we do our jobs. Years ago, when there weren't posts saying things like there's going to be a Category 6 in two weeks, we wouldn't have necessarily started to address this yesterday on air because it was so uncertain. We used to wait until we knew more to present this. But once the information's out there and people are getting mm -hmm. bad information off the Internet, that makes it so that we change our system so that we tell you what we know so that when you do see those social media posts and you get worried, you know you have a trusted source to come to That's right. and get the actual straight answer. You know, on Tuesday, I started mentioning this idea of tropical moisture mm -hmm. coming our way because I started to envision, you know, the cowboys on social media starting to say, hey, a hurricane's coming. And I was yeah. like, I better address this yeah. before it's addressed on social media. And that's that is, that's what we need to do today. It used to be we would, like like Rebecca said, she's exactly right. We would hold that information until we had more certainty so we didn't scare people. But now there are people are going to be scared because there are going to be people on social media posting stuff. So we have to address it ahead of time. Yes. And we have another question. And this is fun because they're using hashtag JB. What about Panama City? And we also got a bunch of comments asking where JB is. JB's lurking. He's a yeah. lurker. Yeah, we JB, have, he's loitering, actually. I'll pop up That's, slider cam. Come you know what? Wave. Yeah, JB, why don't you? He's, he's been loitering. You know why? Because he's, he's babysitting us. He doesn't he's trust Rebecca and I. <laughs> he's afraid that we may ruin his brand. And so we didn't do anything right. to JB. He's just training he's, us yes. to use his system mm -hmm. if, in, if, if, he had, if he wants a day off. <laughs> so yeah. that's good. And so what about Panama City? What do we think for that? You know, it's not out of the realm of possibilities that the storm moves in. That's the truth. It is conceivable. It doesn't seem likely. It seems probably the furthest west that it's going to go is Apalachicola Bay, mm -hmm. uh, which is not very far east of Panama City. So it's close, yeah. but I still think it's going to be easter there. And I, do, I still think that we're not going to be dealing with a storm surge situation, hopefully not much of a wind situation. So we have certainly need the rain more in, in the Tampa Bay area. The Panama City has gotten some decent downpours, and they're not running too far behind on rain. So we'd like to, to stay closer to us and yeah, give us that's that. That's right. We need it. Yeah. And so it looks like we are running out of comments. If you have a few more moments to use those hashtags, hashtag Hey Jeff or hashtag Hey Rebecca, and we can answer your questions live here on the stream. Just to recap, we're watching this very disorganized area of tropical disturbance. And I know you're looking at the map going, why am I looking at Guatemala and talking about Florida? Well, this system's going to cross Guatemala and, and, and cross Honduras and get over closer to Belize. And that's when they expect it to form. Potentially, it ha really have to thread the needle to move through um, the areas between Cozumel and Cuba, but that's what they expect, and then get into the Gulf and possibly develop into a highly sheared, weak tropical storm. I have a request. Okay. Can you take my ugly mug off the TV for a second? I guess. Because I need, I want to advance your graphics, okay. but I can't do it without being <laughs> off camera. Okay, all right. He's a backseat driver. Okay. Yes, sorry about that. I'm just 
Just looking out for the yeah. good of everyone. No, I appreciate it. Okay. And so we're just thinking that we, this will be a rainmaker for the Florida Peninsula. And we're looking at it potentially making an impact along the West Coast. We do desperately need this rain. We don't think it would be a situation where we would see much flooding because the system is forecasted to be on the move. And so it would be a heavy dose of rain, especially on Tuesday moving into Wednesday. Things will start to get drier on Thursday, but not completely. It's just a surge of tropical moisture. This forecast model is the European, and it is the most aggressive with the formation. It keeps it just off of our coastline. This is Tuesday at 11 p.m., so it may be a very rainy night on Tuesday night. It may be a very rainy start on Wednesday, but it is rain that we desperately need, and so that is what we're watching for right now. And so we did get another question. This one is hashtag hey Jeff, hashtag hey Rebecca. What about flooding? And so there's different types of flooding within tropical systems, and we're not worried about many of them in this case. And so we worry about storm surge flooding. You have to have pretty low pressure as well as high winds in order to get coastal flooding from storm surge. And that's not something that I foresee with this, with the information that we have right now. It is not completely out of the realm of possibilities for this to become a weak category one hurricane before landfall, but it is less than a 10% chance at this point with the information that we have. And so the other type of flooding that we worry about is flooding from rainfall. And as you can see from this rainfall forecast map, it's looking like three to four inches is the higher end of the rainfall that we would see along the coastline, possibly five or six. Yeah. Sometimes we get thunderstorms, you know, for a day where yeah. we get, you know, two to four inches of rain. I mean, Dale may brisk in a flood, but that happens yeah. when you dump your coffee mm -hmm. out. So. Yeah, same thing. Shore <laughs> Acres, same thing. Yeah. You know, Bay, Bay Shore Boulevard, same thing. I would call it minor temporary flooding mm -hmm. for the most part is what yeah. we can expect. And so I think we are going to have to wrap it up here on this episode of Tracking the Tropics. We're here Let's give, you. wait, hold on. Let's give Rebecca a <laughs> round of applause. She did all that on her own. She was multi-test. She is a good, mul <laughs> there's Val in the background. Val is, I we have a studio of one, studio <laughs> audience of one here. <laughs> Even JB left. That's right. <laughs> I thank you so much for bearing with me as I learn the system and punching things. You can watch this, any episode of Tracking the Topics on trackingthetopics.tv, or you can listen to it in the podcast form on Spotify or anywhere you get your podcasts. We will be doing this pretty routinely and pretty regularly as this we can know more about this system. And so you can always check in with us here on Tracking the Tropics for the latest and the greatest information because not all the information out there is great. That's right. <laughs> and so for Chief Meteorologist Jeff Baradelli and myself, thank you so much for joining us. Find Tracking the Tropics on these platforms. And for storm updates, the latest models, and helpful resources, visit trackingthetropics.tv.